Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video, and today I actually want to chime in on something that I guess a lot of people are talking about, something I haven't talked about yet, is should games cost $60 still, AAA games, you know, should they still cost $60? Now, if you've been in the gaming scene for a while, you know that the $60 price tag was kind of the gold standard since about the Xbox 360 era, maybe even the era of like the Xbox original, not the Xbox one, the Xbox original. And games have been just $60 for a long time and have not been calculated for inflation. Inflation rates are about 2% a year. And if you were to do the math, it would be approximately 70 to $75 you know, right now games should cost that much. However, if you look at it, that's a lot, that's still a lot of money. Um, let's just take where I live, right? Where I live, the rent prices have gone, you know, they've kind of stayed the same, but so have the wages and job availability. And lots of people where I live, right? Lots of people have part-time jobs instead of full-time jobs and end up making the same amount of money as they did, you know, a couple years ago. Even if you don't, you know, inflation-wise, I'm not talking about if you calculate for inflation, I'm talking about the hard dollar amount. Okay? Still the same. And, you know, it kind of creates this dilemma. Well, where I live, the prices aren't changing. But where the world, where everywhere else in the world, the prices are changing. Or at least in big cities. So, what can you do there? I think that this ties into whether or not digital games should cost less than physical games because digital games well they do still it's still expensive to produce them they don't use up the resources like physical games do they're just a file they cost the electricity and the storage space on a hard drive really and after you buy it you can move it around still and i think that ch uh, cheapening digital games would allow physical game copies to get their prices raised but then it's also counterintuitive because then if digital games stay the same the price doesn't really go up or down so it's very muddy when it comes to the prices me i personally think that video games while they are cheaper i be i am one of the people that believes that AAA games are cheaper because Instead of raising the price, they've implemented all the microtransaction systems and loot boxes and DLCs and stuff. And I think that we need to pick one or the other. We need to either have a game raise its price or have microtransactions in it. And what the, the model that I really like for microtransactions is a game like Smite. Okay, Smite is a MOBA. Uh, and you have all these different characters in it. And there are, you know, you can buy the, you can buy in-game currency. Um, there's two kinds of in-game currency, and you can buy skins for your characters, or you unlock them. But you, you buy each individual skin at a certain price. Overwatch, for instance, they sell their sports, their esports team skins, and they just have a hard dollar amount. I think that is an excellent way. I think selling skins for dollar amounts are excellent ways to monetize your game black this is where black ops 2 did it right all right yeah you could buy the one dlc and get the gun but black ops 2 call of duty black ops 2 had a bunch of skins that you could buy for the prices and you could you could fork out like two i think something like 100 or 200 dollars in skins but you know if you're, if you're getting that product and if I've gotten lots of value out of a game, like let's just take Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is a little different. I, I don't like the way that the microtransaction system is implemented in that game, so I don't support it. But Black Ops 2, let's just say, if I pay $60 for Black Ops 2, and I get $120 of value out of that game, 120 hours, I might be inclined to buy a skin because the game has, my, my rule of thumb is $1 an hour on a video game, unless it's a narrative. So... You know, I'm okay with buying, you know, spending that little extra money to get maybe a cool skin when the game has more than delivered on what I expect from my games. Battlefield 1, I think if Battlefield 1 got rid of their loot box system 
and they gave you just each individual skin, common, uncommon, and the whatever it is, and then you paid for it, right? They just take the shortcut kits and move it over to the skin section instead. If they did that, I might be inclined to buy a skin or two because I've gotten, like I said, I've gotten more than that value out of that game. I got the campaign. You guys watched me play that, and I had a great, like the campaign I think was a $2 an hour campaign for me, right? That justified it, and so, I mean, that would have left, I bought the season pass. So, you know, if you do the math, I've gotten more than $1 an hour of value out of Battlefield 1. And that's just where I stand on this. I don't think, I think either games should be $60, or more than $60, or if they implement microtransactions, they make it so it's one per, you know, one hard purchase for a guaranteed item. This is one of the reasons why I'm actually, you know, I've been a long time Call of Duty fan, okay? Ever since, like, Black Ops 1, I've been buying all the Call of Duties. I'm not buying the next Call of Duty this November. I'm not. I'm done with it because if you play World War II long enough, you see all the little inner, inner workings to try and make you buy skins. And it's, you know, if it was just hard purchases for skins, I'd be totally cool with it. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you think game prices should go up? Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention is AAA game production, the price of it has not um has gone up 10 times okay if you calculate for inflation it should be like 150 percent okay it's at 1000 percent so triple a game production is way more expensive than it used to be so it it hasn't really ch in, uh, adjusted for the 60 dollars price tag i just want to make that clear so there is that aspect to it too but you guys can do more research into that you know, the cost of game production. You can see that game production has has gone way up high compared to inflation where it should be like here. So that's it for this video, guys. If you, you know, I want to I want to see all your thoughts in the comments below. This is a very interesting discussion that I think should really be talked about and maybe our, may lead us to a way to solve the loot box problem that is currently plaguing AAA video games. But I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or steam and post of whatever I decide to make.